Alright, Shalom Hebrews. Alright, check this out, Hebrews. This is Israel in Israel for the Israelite Brotherhood. Alright, Hebrews. We got a, a lot of Hebrews. You know, it's probably half the Hebrew population, you know, stuck on the uh God's son and, and believing in the God's son and and, and don't understand where we as Israelites got the term from. You know, we got it from the slavery days. You know, the Hebrews got it from the slavery days and they was encouraged to believe in Jesus. You know, and, and you know, that come from the slavery days. Ain't no question about that. And if any person try to argue that we didn't get Jesus from the plantation, something wrong with them. But this what I want to go into, you know, that the uh, that the sons of Yah and that Almighty Yah son is Israel, the nation of Israel. You know, we know in Tanakh history that it's recorded, you know, that Almighty Yah sons went into the uh, daughters of men and so forth and that that wasn't no good thing that wasn't no good thing and how that the creator was kind of like you know upset with that and how that the age the, the men our age got cut down man but but because that was they was living four and five and six hundred years that that and eight and nine hundred years that after uh them sons, the them sons of the Most High, the fallen angelic beings who I already show you, they and trace them to the, uh, you know, Cain descendants with the Nephilim and over then to the Amorites, the Israelite Brotherhood got history covering that, but you know, man, how everybody lived a pretty good, you know, decent age, man, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> You know, until the uh, sons of God, the God's sons came into the population and so forth, you know, but how, man, they was living, man, before the prophet Noah and the creator had to flood everything out, how everybody was living, you know, man, a, 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 a good long time, you know, six, seven hundred years, you know, uh, uh Man, Methuselah and, and you know, Jared, 800 years. You know, he did 800 years and Jared, 160 and two years and begat Enoch and Enoch, 800 years. And man, they was living a long time. And, and then when the, uh, when the sons, when the sons of God came into the Herman population, then the creator cut the life expectancy down, see? And it come to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth and daughters were born unto them that the sons, look, that the sons of Yah saw the daughters of men that they were fair. I already explained about that word fair, how they could be tricky with that word fair and how that word fair can, you know, means, you know, uh, uh, white skinned and that stuff. And then, you know, I explained how Cain gonna be then lost his pigmentation you know created gonna be then took his pigmentation as a mark for killing his brother abel and how he went down into the underground cities men in turkey i got all this explained in the videos you know you all you got to do is look and see you know it's a whole nother history explaining that but i'm finna explain about this sons of god you know what i'm saying of the sons of yah and how did we Israelites, not the Israelite Brotherhood, or are the Israelites that that's woke now, but the Israelites that sleep, that's called African American blacks and Negroes, how they believing in Jesus and don't have an understanding of what's going on and what our people have been through and how did they come to believe in the plantation owner's religion. Now, man, it's a whole lot going on. But I'm going to show you Israelites that uh, 
that the uh that that Yasun is a term of endurement. All right, but as you see, the people was living for a long time, you know, and then the sons of Yah, men, men, the sons of Yah, going to the daughters of men, and then look, Almighty Yah said. And the Elohim said, My spirit shall not always strive with man, for that he is all also his flesh, yet his days shall be in hundred and twenty years. See, because those fellow angelic beings no went into the human population back then, man, that's going uh uh man, that act cut everybody's life expectancy down and stuff. You know, mixing with them and then the flood, you know, the creator tried to get rid of them and stuff because look and y'all saw that the wickedness now the wickedness gonna come from the felon angelic beings as i explained how that that's the canite culture and that's the culture that we are under now where it's no justice and it's suffering and, and it's misery and there's all kind of wickedness going on on all kind of levels that you can ever imagine and that's the kind of culture that we under now and that the creator destroyed back then but had that that culture had lingered on and survived over from the Nephilim into the Amorite culture and the Canite culture and then you know the Canites mixed up with them and then you know that would cause all the wickedness but look and, and y'all saw the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thought of his heart was only evil continually and it repented that Yah he had made man yes you see them them felon angelic beings them mixed in so the sons of Yah mixing in with human can was no good thing so we know that almighty Yah is not gonna go impregnate no woman he ain't going to go impregnate no woman to uh, have a son or, or, or make a woman have a miraculous son that's supposed to represent him. Now, we know that part of the covenant contract is that you ain't supposed to make no image of the creator in heaven or in the earth. You know, that's just one of the Man, commandments that did everybody should know. You know, that you ain't supposed to make no image of the most high in heaven or earth. You know what I'm saying? Or, or in the sea. And, and then that's violating that. You know what I'm saying? That's violating that by uh, having an image of, of a God's son that's supposed to represent the creator. But we know that almighty y'all you know what i'm saying see it don't do that and then i explain the jesus uh, uh story in quite a few videos how that the the history that we have of jesus coming from the slavery days is incorrect historically incorrect and that how that you know on the plantation that it was a cold game played that you know that if the slave you know man the slave owner being made a small infraction but you know how brutal how brutal the slave owners was and how they'll beat you for any minor infraction that's to keep the people in control and under control and they can work them to death and, and you know but just keeping your uh uh a profit under control because we was you know chattel slavery and we was just considered property and not you know humans with a spirit and, and you know on any of that and how we was just seen as property but this the cold game that was played that when the slave did something you know wrong and stuff and then how he'll get beat you know with them whips you know with the whips mean beat you beat your skin off your back and then how that you know mean that that the preacher who the slave owner educated inside the house and set him among the slaves and then taught him to believe in jesus that that when that slave did some infraction and then he said jesus please save me and then the slave owner didn't whoop him 
And then that spread throughout all the slaves. Man, I'm talking about all the slaves start believing in Jesus. Then not to get a whooping and a beating, just uh, uh, just to holler out Jesus' name. And then we start believing in that after years and years of the Caucasians, uh, slave owners being lenient to you when you use the name Jesus then you know that that became strong in our community especially a defenseless people that was captured man and brung captured here and, and, and then brung over here men on ships you ain't got no type of defense ain't no type of defense and then the only defense that they give you is that name jesus where the where the slave owner don't beat you half to death you know and, and then as we can see how that name, you know, when a, when when a person go do some wrong and some mischief in the community, and then he go hollering Jesus in the courtroom, and then how the judge go light on him and stuff, you know. I mean, it's been a tradition among our captors for a long time, and they've been playing that game for a long time. And then you know, me in the church, man, it's like it, man, it's like fifty churches. For, for one block, you know, and it's kind of crazy because they all supposed to be worshiping the, the same God. But but yeah, there's 50 churches for every block. But how about that we got our whole total understanding of Jesus on the plantation? And, and then, you know, and, and, and it was out of survival. I mean, it was basically out of survival because here it is, you know, the slave owner won't whip all your skin off your back and won't just outright kill you if you start using the name Jesus and, and then the slaves man because they helpless and and, and and ain't got no help and, and nobody can help you in slavery days nobody can help you that when the slave owner put you to death that you was his property that there wasn't no law or nothing and there's plenty 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 captured Hebrews that was put to death just because they looked at, at, at the slave on their own, you know. And, man, we know how that story go, man, and how slavery was. And then how did they try to wash it out and, and try to uh, uh, change it and get the mind of slavery out the people's mind? How can you uh, uh, worry about slavery if you're rapping about wickedness? and evilness and so forth you know you never forgot about your past and your past ain't important it's why we in the conditions that we in now also after the civil rights how martin luther king then was tricked into believing that it was better to go shop in our captors and oppressor stores than to keep continuing in our community with the resources that we had and we all know the end result of the civil rights and then they got the people still so blind and so gullible and it's basically through the christian church the Je the jesus believers and how did they got the people believing that you know the civil rights was a just thing and it was beneficial fish you to us and how did that line legacy been passed on through the church and so forth you know some of you people that's just now listening to me you're gonna be hurt and this is hurting you because you know you believe in jesus and you believe that what you believe is right i'm here to tell you that it's a cold game been played on us israelites from the time that we got the covenant all the way up to now that our enemies been playing serious games and these games are life altering and life determining games where that if you don't get the understanding that you know your kids and you don't get the fullness of life like you supposed to have on this earth and so forth and that how we are caught in a system like that and then how i explain that that's that amorite canite culture that almighty y'all wanted us to destroy the tax system the tax system that exists today <clears throat> all right hebrews i want to go 
meaning to this God son thing, you know, like I say, that that is important, you know, that when Almighty Yah, you know, if you look in Tanakh history and we have to use Tanakh history as the foundation, you know, for you people that believe in the New Testament, that how you have to get an understanding of the Tanakh or, or what the people call the Old Testament. It's the foundation. And, and if you don't have a foundation, then, man, you could be washed away. We already know that if you ain't got, got no foundation, how everything crumble. And then that's basically what's been happening to the Christian church. You know, it's like even our enemies. Man, if you look at countless videos where they supposed to be, be allegedly debunking Israelites, you know, I say Israelites using Jewish myths, you know, our enemies be having fun off them because they using Jewish myths and so forth. And, and then how that man, them folks say that uh, the Israelites waking up and that how that it's finna destroy the church and that how that they scrambling right now, scrambling to trying to come up with a method to try to counter the Israelites from waking up and in the church, you know, I just say that the same book, even though they got the New Testament attached, but but but, but that the book in the history that they try to portray, you know, as us not being Israelites because you're not gonna find your Israelite heritage in the New Testament. You're not gonna find your Israelite heritage in the New Testament. It wasn't created for the Israelites to find a heritage in the New Testament. You know, and it how did you know, the people who created that story, man, created it for control purposes, for control purposes. And then I explain in, in countless videos how we Israelites abandoned our heritage to some Babylonian scribes. You know, the Babylonian scribes and as well as a host of other nations that settled in the promised land. After we Israelites ran into Africa during the Babylonian wars and how did those new settlers believed in demigods, God's sons, women having miraculous births. And then, you know, I want to examine what they try to use in the Tanakh with the prophet Isaiah talking about that he prophesies uh, uh, Jesus Jesus' birth and, 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 and the, the, the Mary having a, a miracle son and so forth and, and, and then how I say that that's Christian theology and then if you look in the Jewish text which a person should trust more than the Christian text being that the Christian texts and books are knockoffs of the Jewish sources and then in the Jewish sources man they ain't even trying to promote no demigod and stuff and then how I explain how Christianity come about in the Discopolis cities in the Discopolis cities where where Eskenaz is settled and how did that stuff was created for proxy wars you know did that how did the religions were created for proxy wars and that those proxy wars been stemming on all the way to the day you know in, in, in the discopolis cities is where you know the uh jesus allegedly all the jesus's did they ministries and so forth and then how did you get this story from there and then how did that area was under the control of eskenazi and then that's why come you see today in, in christian hell countries especially the templars and in, in, in the catholic church and all the branches of christianity honor eskenazi honor eskenazi and eskenazi is they got and eskenazi is the chosen people and eskenazi is the israelites you know and that's what the christian church been promoting for a long time you know and then how that in the muslim world you know, and how it, the civil parties, you know what I'm saying, are promoted, and, and how that, you know, the 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 civil party Jews, you know, are promoted in, in the uh in the Islamic world. You know what I'm saying? The history, bear this now. 
if you Israelites ever watch the uh, Templars and the Crusaders war with them uh, Muslims and, and the them Arabs in, in the Promised Land over Jerusalem, that's Ashkenazi and the Sephardis uh, uh, fighting proxy wars for the control of the Promised Land using the religions that they created. All right, how about that man that them uh, uh, folks been playing the cold game on everybody for a long time? And that what what I'm explaining is that Christianity was created by Ashkenazi in the Discopolis city, and that you know I got videos explaining how the first council of wasn't in Nicaea, but how it was in the Discopolis, I think Pella or something like that, and that how did they you know. The bishops and the ones who created Christianity hung out in the Discopolis cities. Well, Christianity uh, uh, chased uh, uh, through the Catholic Church, chased them, uh, them Edomite Arabs, uh, uh, the uh, Sephardim branch, them in, in 70 AD, chased them across the, uh, the, from the Promised Land on up into Spain. And then when they got in Spain, the Catholic Church uh, come expel them from there. And then how in the Muslims, when when the Muslims control Spain, and, and then how that those Edomite Jews, the Sephardims, would correspond with the Khazars and so forth, and how that they were surprised that it was a a, a, a Jewish community in the Caucasus Mountain, in Armenia and so forth, and I explain where the Kurites and the Kurds come from. You know, I explain what Kurds and the Kurites come from. All right, but how did that was going to be Ashkenazi created those uh, groups in the Caucasus, you know, that have the, uh, the Israelite heritage and so forth, and then how did the ones that was in Spain uh, under Muslim control you know is where you find the Sephardim and the Sephardis you know but like I say if you watch them them uh, uh, old uh, uh, reenactments of the Crusader Wars the Templars Wars that's them fighting and stuff over the promised land and how did the, the, the Eskenazi and the Sephardi ain't going head up you know they ain't doing that that's why come it's easy for those Muslim Countries like Oman and, and the the Arab Emirates, the Arab Emirates, the Arab Amorites, and and Jordan. You know what I'm saying? Those are Edomites, and then how all those nations are able to stabilize a relation with the Jewish state is because of those Edomite Jews, them Edomite rabbis pulling their strings in their association with those Edomite nations and so forth. And now you see them coming up under one umbrella. All all it is, they seeing that we Israelites are starting to wake up. Man, I bet you they got their eyes on us and that they know that we starting to wake up and that the time getting close. And then how did all those folks trying to come together and trying to make it seem like that it legitimized the Jews that are there because they are all in it together they're all in it together and i got videos explaining how the yemenite jews went over into ethiopia and how did those yemenite jews are, are from the the edomite branch the sephardims and also how john harnicus the 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 sephardi uh uh Seb Harvey converted all the Edomite tribes, you know, in 130 BC, and then how did them folks would go over into uh Ethiopia by way of Yemen and so forth. But but you see how those Jews are calling those Edomite tribes in today. You know, they got nations and so forth, and then how did those nations are uh, uh, getting a uh, uh, normalization? with the Jewish state is because the Sephardims, you know, the Sephardims, you know, got pulled in Muslim countries since they created 
you know, Islam. You know what I'm saying? And everybody know that, you know, Muhammad was hanging out with some Jews in Arabia and so forth. And that they was all merchants and, and so forth. And that how the real Israelites, the real Israelites and how that uh, uh, Muhammad and, and the people that associated with the Jews at that time didn't know that they wasn't associating with the real Israelites and how that the real Israelites had been broke covenant during the Babylonian wars and been ran off into uh, Africa and so forth and how by the time Islam was created, man, we had been off the covenant, man, for almost uh, 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 1,300 years, 1,400 years and that how that we abandoned the covenant saying that we didn't want nothing to do with the Israelite heritage, meaning that anybody that ran across us in Africa wouldn't have just actually known that we was the Israelites unless they had been observing us, as I explained in other videos, how the Greeks and so forth did and how them folks kept up with us. You know what I'm saying? And then, But how that we didn't have no Jesus and believe in no God's sons while we was in Africa. And how about that the Ethiopians been associated with Christianity since, man, I guess the, uh, the, uh, man, the first century AD, but man, around about seven, uh, uh, seven AD or something like that, you know, the, how Ethiopia had Christianity from them Greek uh, uh, Edomites that had sailed there and then went in there and then converted them and that how that that was a marker not to enslave none of them when the transatlantic slave trade started and how Christianity was in Africa and a whole lot of nations had converted to Christianity as a marker of not to be taken to slavery and so forth you know it's a cold game being played you know in this world and especially with world history and then how i explain to you israelites how you can't trust no history that our enemies had gave us i mean about africa and our connection you know if they ain't said that we the israelites and showed that we the israelites after all this time from the transatlantic slave trade uh, uh, beginnings to now if they ain't never said we the israelites then how you gonna trust them to try to say that we these peoples or we connected to those people in africa you got to be stoned out your mind these the same peoples that beat you on the plantation and, and for hundreds of years not 50 60 years not 70 years not 150 years, not 200 years, man, all, almost at, at 300 years, they done beat us and, and then turn the power over to their descendants uh, 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 under this new law of freeing us and, and then how we got separate laws and then how that the slave owner descendants are, are the policemen and, and the Ku Klux Klan's that then join the police department and then how did they brutalizing us right now today that if it wasn't for our people having the phones by the grace of almighty y'all having the cell phones and be able to record this and how the whole world will be done turned to blind eye to this and how did the very people that they murdering uh, uh the slave owners descendants are murdering are, are, are christian believers nine out of ten when they kill one of these Israelites, they go by the title of African American and black. You're going to see a cross on their neck. You're going to see a cross somewhere. Now, we got to understand too, Israelites, I ain't trying to brush away our people's death, that we as woke Israelites know that if you don't call on Almighty Yah, and then you perish by the hand, man, our, our enemies not believing in Almighty Yah, that that's going to be your destiny in captivity and how almighty y'all say some of us gonna perish away and how you are fulfilling that quota but how that you can change that if you change your ways and start believing in almighty y'all and you see ain't no god son saving us from our uh, uh slave owners 
descendants or, and didn't save us from our slave owners. Man, that's another thing, believing in this God son stuff that why would why would you uh, uh pray to a god that can't save now we know that almighty y'all outlined the curses that if the covenant was broken that we would reap the curses and we israelites under you know what i'm saying almighty our grace we understand that we broke the covenant and that's why our people suffering suffering but you got our people that don't know that we Israelites and still suffering from the effects of slavery that still brainwashed that man they don't know and how man we can't we can't save you people or uh, uh, help you Israelites if you're functioning under the title Negro, African American and Black is no salvation for you because you're going to be believing in the demigod worship you're going to believe in the slave owners religion that was given to you on, on the plantation while you was under distress you know why why you was under oppression and then that's what happened to us you know that's what happened to us and then how did we think that you know it's like man man i got some relatives man, man i had a relative man that did you know i was explaining the jesus story to him and how did you know our um enemies how they cook that up and then how did they put that specifically on the slaves now and i didn't explain how did it's a remake of the egyptian religion is horse the jesus story is the is is horse story it, it, in the egyptian religion you know i didn't explain that to her but i explained how eskenazi settled there and how that you know that the people doing jesus time were not Israelites and were not the exiles and that that's the only people that you could possibly try to attribute the New Testament to if you was classifying them as Israelites would be off the exiles. The exiles, a little 1%, they come back from the Mesopotamian area after the Babylonian wars. And then how I explain the Greeks got them and then how did they didn't believe in no demigod or, or no god son coming to save them and, and then how 500 years go by 500 years 187,000 days 187,000 days go by and then you know they start coming with this god son stuff you know it's like you know from the beginning of america when 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 columbus and them first pull up to now now you see the difference between the way that they was living then and then the way that we live in now it's kind of like how it was in the tanakh with the belief of jesus a god's son coming to save and and, and them not believe in it the people in tanakh history didn't believe in it and we believe in the law that moses gave us and, and the curses now what it was because the curses, Almighty Yah didn't zap you with them immediately. Our people didn't take them serious. And then events after events happened. And then when them events happened, man, man there wasn't no reverse in those events. And then, you mean, we was eventually driven out the land. We was driven out the land in a state of disbelief. We left the land in a state of disbelief. And I explained how the Egyptians, you know, killed King Josiah, our last chance of being free and not being up under the yoke of any nation because our time in, in the promised land is it's the only time that we ever had land and that we ever been free. Matter of fact, this is the only land that we can say that is ours and that connect us, you know, to a land, a, a geography is our Israelite heritage and us waking up to that we Israelites because other than that, we don't have no heritage and no land nowhere on the face of this earth. You know, us living in America the way that we live in now, man, we can't have no unity like this. It is no unity under the control of our oppressor. They make it hard, you know, we're, for the Negroes, us us Israelites learning to to uh 
men to correlate and, 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 and to uh, hook up and link and how we trying to be together some kind of way even if it's on the digital social social platform but but how we trying to be together all right man we can't have no unity here but man man it's like in Africa they try to say that we from all these nations and we know that you know we can't be from all these nations and that if we tried to go to these nations that we'll have to fall up under the control men of them Africans in them nations and then you know you can't be the Israelite the Hebrew Israelite in those nations and that's why our enemies been trying their best to associate us with the African nations and peoples the Hamites and I explain that in videos and so forth but you know the promised land is it is the only land that we got and that we can claim as ours where we can have sovereignty and, and I've been trying to you know talk to the people that got a, a, a little control in, in Western culture you know about how the, this Israelite issue has to be settled you know it, it's gonna have to be settled this Israelite issue and how did them people got a lot of plans a lot of futuristic plans and, and they don't include us Israelites and how did you know because they think that we under the control of this American system and then and then how we can't break loose and then how that it's going to take almighty Yah to, to resurrect these uh, uh, eastern nations you know China and Russia didn't participate in the slavery trade and how did this a possibility man if something fall out man that our freedom gonna be there but other than that they, how they trying to keep us locked down in the system where we can't man fight man we ain't got no army we ain't got no military we ain't got no police we ain't got nothing and how we are defenseless people caught up in the system that we was enslaved in and how did they not put the brand of America on us and all these different titles and, and that how that we don't have no unity and and that how we needs to be connected to our land and, and have some unity and that's one of the reasons that they've been designating you Negroes uh, uh, to these African states and so forth to keep you from wanting to come back home or even have the desire all right Hebrews I've been talking about you know that Jesus stuff and then how did you know that that the God son is a turn of endurement now I already explained how did almighty you sons did go into the uh daughters of man and into the human population and how that there wasn't no good thing because life expectancy got cut down after that you know whereas we was living you know without mix with them for eight and nine hundred years and that when we start mixing with the felon angelic beings that that went over into the amorites uh, uh how did everybody uh life expectancy was cut down but this is what you know i want to say about you know almighty y'all uh, uh, calling his people, uh, uh, his firstborn, and how that that was used on King David, how that that was used on King Solomon, and it was even used on the tribe of Ephraim. How Almighty Yah said that Ephraim was his firstborn, but most of all, in, in how the first usage of it is going to be doing Exodus. When Prophet Moses was sent in to tell Pharaoh that Almighty Yah said that Israel was his firstborn. And, and then guess what make us Almighty Yah firstborn is because that that felon angelic being culture that the Amorites uh, uh, pushed, the Canaanite tribes pushed coming from the felon angelic beings was unjust. And that how the Creator of everything was coming with a covenant and how he gave it to the Israelites of not not prophet Abraham and how the prophet Abraham was was a, a, a was a model of how we Israelites should be you know and I explained you know how prophet Abraham was in Mesopotamia and then how he didn't believe 
in, in the Canaanite Amorite gods and so forth and how he even went to Egypt and then he didn't believe in the Egyptian gods and the Egyptians kicked him up out of there get up out of here you know what I'm saying gave him back our mama and then told him to get on down get on away from here you know and then prophet Abraham went to Canaan and then how he didn't believe in the Canaanite gods then this is you know it ain't many of them and how it was armies around him and how he believed in almighty Yah and them folks didn't touch him or bother him and the same would be with his son Isaac you know the the, the, the enemies didn't touch him because he believed in almighty Yah and then how did Egypt was right there and the Canaanite culture was right there and then his son uh, uh, Israel, you know, and, and, and then how that the prophets uh, 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 in covenant came through Israel, Jacob, and how he would inherit the land, and how we was Almighty Yah firstborn with the covenant that he gave us was to extinguish that Nephilim, Amorite, Canaanite culture that was there, you know, and, and then how that Almighty Yah had saved the Amorites one time and then blessed them and gave them. A, a good start, but how that they would mix in with with, with the fallen angelic beings, and then you know they would turn wicked and so forth and become unjust. And this culture that we have now, this called Western civilization, is the direct a uh, culture that that was. <clears throat> All right, Hebrews, we see that you know that Almighty Yah called. King David, his son, he called King Solomon his son, and the tribe of Ephraim. And then, like I said, that the tribe of Israel, the, the Israel, the nation, it was Almighty Yah firstborn because Almighty Yah gave us a covenant, a new covenant, that that that, that the felon angelic beings, uh, the Canaanites, or uh, none of them had nothing to do with it and how that we were supposed to be just with each other and righteous in the Tanakh explain it in detail many explain it in detail all right look here look in Egypt prophet Moses would go to uh, um to Pharaoh and then this is one of the Nubian upper Egyptians that was on the on the throne that they didn't know Joseph and how they oppressed us and 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 how the the pharaohs from from Upper Egypt didn't know Almighty Yah and then how did you know they uh oppressed us and so forth and then you know how Almighty Yah rose up Prophet Moses and then how he would go to Pharaoh you know what I'm saying and this is what he says look th this is. Exodus 4, my man, I'm around about 21. And the Elohim said unto Moses, When thou goest to return into Egypt, see that thou do all these wonders before Pharaoh, which I have put in thee in hand. But I will harden his heart, that he shall not let the people go. And thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, This said the Elohim, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. Now, you see that Israel is my son, even my firstborn. So, you know, we we know that this Jesus fella can't be the firstborn of Almighty Yah because he just said from the beginning. Now, this is way before a, 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 a Messiah demigod concept was even conceived now that concept existed in Jesus, but we had broke away from that and we was going into something new, you know, a new culture, and, and then Almighty Yah told us, you know what I'm saying, and, and told Pharaoh that we was his firstborn, so, you know, Jesus ain't gonna be the firstborn, because Exodus gonna be, man, some thousands of years before the New Testament, and, and, and then we know that the New Testament uh, uh, was occupied, uh, uh, that the people in the New Testament that occupied the promised land were the foreigners and so forth and i'm gonna demonstrate that all right so we see that almighty y'all see that that israel was his first born so now we're gonna go to uh man we're gonna go look and i can show that pharaoh didn't believe 
in the most high too. All right, let me see. Let me see. And he said, the, uh, the, the Hebrews that met with us, let us go. And after the Aaron went in on to told Pharaoh, this said the Elohim, uh, the, the Yah of Israel, let my people go that they may hold the feast unto me in the wilderness. And Pharaoh said, who is the Elohim that I should obey his voice to let Israel go? I know not the Elohim, neither would I let Israel go. So as I explained, any Israelites that's believing in some Egyptian culture, Man, how did the Egyptians tricked us out the promised land and then how the very slavery that we going through today comes from the Egyptian origin and our association with the Egyptian culture. And that was one of the reasons why the slave owner will put the knockoff Christianity religion on you because it's an Egyptian religion. All right. So we see that Almighty Yah said that, uh, Israel was his firstborn. So then, if we go to, uh, man, I think, what's this going to be? Chronicles. Chronicles 22. 22.10. All right, Chronicles 22.10. 22.10. Second Chronicles 22.10. And let's see what it says. Let's, let's get it down. We're going to get it down. But we know that Almighty Yah, when we left Egypt, that Almighty Yah didn't tell us to uh, follow no God's son. You know what I'm saying? That would be First Chronicles 22.10. Let's see. First Chronicles 22.10. Yeah, man. So we're going to get the uh, belief in the Jesus on the plantation from the slave owners whooping the peoples and, and then tricking them by saying by making them believe in the Jesus or stop them from getting a whooping and stuff and then that's what happened and after hundreds of years of doing that trick that that the people believe in Jesus. It's like now you go to court, you you've been and did some wrong and you say, Oh, Jesus helped me and Jesus done saved me and then bring a old a, a preacher there how they'll cut you loose and, and give you a break and stuff because it's really more important on the overall fight with them to let this one individual go and, and to ensnare uh, uh, hundreds you know what I'm saying it, 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 if he let one individual off the hook believing in Jesus he then snared a hundred as high as being with us dealing with that stuff and then that's what they do you know somebody see somebody get off death row if because he believing in Jesus it is because that they want to send a strong message to the rest of the slaves it is all they been doing it's all they been doing it's been the cold game played on us look all right this is what the creator is saying to Solomon look Behold, a son shall be, you know, this is what he's saying to King David. You know, man, man, man about the temple. And Solomon is called his son. Behold, a son, this is First Chronicles 22, I'm around by nine. Behold, a son shall be born to thee who shall be a man of rest. And I will give him rest from all his enemies round about. For his name shall be Solomon, and I will give him peace, quietness unto Israel in his days. He shall build a house for my name, and he shall be my son. Look, he shall be my son, and, and I will be his father, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom over Israel forever. But we know what happened to Solomon and how Solomon violated so bad. And matter of fact, King Solomon, man, I got a video, man, about the wickedness of King Solomon and how King Solomon it is the reason why we in slavery right now and up under this oppression that we're going through because it was Solomon that that started breaking the covenant that that allowed Jeroboam, who was from the tribe of Ephraim, to go off into Egypt and to come out with two Egyptian institutions on us. And then that would cause our enslavement. You know, but you see how Solomon was called his son. You know, Solomon was called his son. You know what I'm saying? Let's see what 17. All right. He shall build me in house and I will establish his throne forever. 
I, I will be his father and he shall be my son. And, and I will not take my mercy away from him at, as I took it from him that was before him. But you see what they say? You see what they say? That I will be his father and, and he shall be my son. You see, see, that's a turn of endurance. That's a turn of endurement. That's a turn of endurement and how that they would take them terms and then turn that into demigod worship. Because, like I say, the Egyptian religion, they had to refashion that and then refashioning that and then putting that Jesus stuff on as Christianity. Man, you ensnared with the same Egyptian stuff that we broke covenant on it and then now you worshiping it and praying to that God. Praying to the Egyptian God is what you doing. Man, they cold, man. They been doing us like this for a long time. Now, let's go to Psalms, Psalms 2. Man, now, this is dealing with King David without a question. Without a question. This dealing with King David. Psalms 2, 7. All right. I, I would de de declare the decree, the Elohim. The Elohim had said unto me, Thou art my son. This day I have begotten thee. Now this is King David. This is King David he talking about. Look. Why do the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The king of the earth set themselves and the rulers take counsel together against the Elohim and against his anointed, saying, Let us break their bands of sound and cast away their cords from us. That's the way it is now today. He that sitteth in the heavens shall laugh. The Elohim shall have them in, in, in derision. Then shall he speak unto them in his wrath and vax them in his sore pleasure. Yet have I set my king upon the, the holy hill of Zion. I would declare the decree the Elohim has said unto me, Thou art my son, this day have I begotten thee. Now, now, come on now. Now, if anybody believe in anything coming from our slave owners, and that's where you got the Jesus believe for you Hebrews that's in them churches, that believe in the New Testament and believe that Jesus is a God's son and then basing it up on Tanakh history, man, you is living in a delusion. And our slave owners put you there. But the Israelite Brotherhood is here to bring you out of it. All right, check this out. So we see that Almighty Yah, now see the King David and Solomon, man, is his son. And, and, and then I show how the tribes of Israel was his firstborn coming from Exodus. How ain't no question about that. So then, then we're going to go to Jeremiah 31. Maybe I think it's 31 9. And then we're going to see what that say. Jeremiah 31 9. Let's see what that say. And then I'm going to read that story about Emmanuel. Where, where in, in the English language they got that and try to say that that's got in reference to a demigod Jesus and then if you read that whole story you'll see that that's not true that that that, that is not true and that how did they then just cook that up you know what I'm saying I, out of nowhere and, and then I explain how did the people who started Christianity that the people who started Christianity come from the uh came from the uh the Scopolis city where Eskenazi was. So you ain't dealing with no Israelites. You ain't dealing with no Israelites, all right? So then if we go to 31, and then we get to verse 9. Look. All right, 31, 9. This is Jeremiah. Then shall they shall come weeping with supplication. Will I lead them? I will cause them to walk by the rivers of water in a straight way, wherein they shall not stumble for I am a father to Israel, and Ephraim is my firstborn. Ephraim is my firstborn. Now, don't you see how Almighty Yah using that as a term of endurement the whole time? And, and then how our enemies now took that Almighty Yah word as, as they always do try to step on it. And now they done turned that into demigod worship. Yeah, they done turned that into demigod worship. Now, let's go to Isaiah 
The man I think is seven. Isaiah chapter seven, where they try to say that the word Emmanuel, and, and, and that's making reference to Jesus, a, a demigod, and, and that how I'm going to explain that that word Emmanuel, it, it, it means that Yah, Yah with us, Yah is among us, all right, Almighty Yah was among the believers back then, and, and if he told his prophets or, or the people to name a baby that at the time is because he was among them and with them with the troubles that they was going through. But the high enemies none took that and then turned that into a religion and tried to use this to support demigod worship and then how they wrong. And, and that how if you look at during the time that Ahaz was on the throne, that Ahaz was on the throne, uh, you know, Prophet Isaiah was the prophet, man, man, I think, man, for about 75 years or 80 years from Uhaz, Jotham, Ahaz, and King Hezekiah of Judah, you know, and then during that time, you have to look and see what was going on during that time, and then how did, if you read them stories in that history, how that, they didn't have no demigod in worship, uh, 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 no demigod worship in man, but this what I want the Israelites to know that if it was any mention of any Messiah coming to save the people, you got to understand that the book uh, of Isaiah, man, is wrote man in seven, man, man I take, think it's seven, 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 six, seven, sixty seven BC, whereas the prophecy. For King Josiah, uh, uh, come about, man, to keep to clean up the Egyptian religion, and that's what we was affected on. That was causing our troubles. The, the Israelites that was on the Egyptian religion was robbing and trying to rob Judah, and then even tried to set up a king in Judah that would do their will, you know. And then how that Judah went and hired the Assyrians. And then how the, we had been kicking it with the Assyrians, but I explained how the Assyrians were robbers. And then how that they going to take prophet Isaiah going into this prophetess, having these two sons, and then the creator telling them him to change their names at, at different times because he, he, he was coming different. You know, one was for plunder and one almighty Yah was among us and 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 in the other one man i forgot what his name mean but that was all in relations of that time and, and, and during the time that they was living in with prophet isaiah dealing with the uh i mean with the israelites especially with ahaz and then how did they take that story man and turn it into something else but if you read the story you will understand you know what i'm saying that he ain't talking about no demigod worship and then how did them crooks, them them crooks, them church crooks, the preachers and, and, and our enemies who distort our history and then took that one verse and, and then turned it into demigod worship. You know, let's read chapter 6 and then see. You know, I might even go read something about King Uzziah and how down he was. You know what I'm saying? Matter of fact, let's go read a little his history and, and then it'll flow into the three three kings that prophet Isaiah is dealing with that would construct that story about the Emmanuel and then we'll get a better understanding of it. We're gonna get a better understanding. Alright, so King Josiah, man, I think his history is gonna be let me see, that'd be Second Chronicles second chronicle six man 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 i think his daddy got killed and he was caught up man they was doing all kind of old treacherous stuff the tribes of israel fighting against the tribe of judah and how man it was going off and on and ended how the tribes of israel gonna be mostly against the tribe of judah is because the egyptians is controlling the tribes of israel through the uh, tribe of Ephraim and the others that was on Egyptian religion. So you know they gonna keep confusion with the tribe of Judah as what was happening 
in Tanakh history, as you can see. Now right, look, all right. Then all the people of Judah, this is Second Chronicles 26. Then all the people of Judah took Uzziah, you know what I'm saying, his daddy and then got cute. And you know what I'm saying? His daddy got cute. And you know what I'm saying? I think they even came and robbed him. Look. So Johas, the king of Israel, went up and, and they saw one another in, in, in the face. But he and Amaziah, that's going to be, I mean, Uzziah, father, king of Judah at Bethlehem, which belonged to Judah. And Judah was put to the worst before Israel. And then they fled every man to his tent. And Joash, the king of Israel, took Amaziah, king of Judah, and the son of Joash, the son of Je Jehoshaphat, at Bethlehem, and brought him to Jerusalem, and break down the walls of Jerusalem from the gate of Ephraim to the corner gate of uh, the four cubits. Now, they they on Egyptian religion. They robbing. Uh, uh, they trying to rob Almighty Yah. Last little light was the tribe of Judah through the uh, uh, King David line. All right. And he took all the gold and silver and all the vessels that were found in the house of Yah with Obedium and the treasures of the king's house and the hostages also and returned to Samaria. And, and Amaziah, the son of Joash, king of Judah, lived after the death of Joash, son of Jehoash, king of Israel, 15 years. Now the rest of the acts of Amaziah, first and last, behold, are, are, are they not written in the book of the kings of Judah and Israel? Now after the time that Amaziah did turn away from following the Elohim, they made a conspiracy against him in Jerusalem and, and he led to Lachish. But they sent to Lachish after him and slew him and they brought him upon the horses and buried him in the, the father city in Judah. Then all the people of Judah took Uzziah who was 16 years old and made him king in the room of his father Amaziah and he built Elah and restored it to Judah after that the king slept with his father 16 years old was Uzziah when he began to reign and he reigned 50 and 2 years in Jerusalem and his mother's name was Jecola of Jerusalem and he did that which was right in the sight of the Elohim according to all that his father Amaziah did and he saw Yah in the days of Zechariah, who had understanding in the vision of Yah, and as long as he sought the Yah, the, the Elohim, Yah made him to prosper. And he went forth and warred against the Philistines, and break down the wall of Gath, and the wall of Jemna, and the wall of Ashdod, and built cities around Ashdod among the, the Philistines. And Yah helped him men, against the Philistines and, and against the Arabians that dwelt in Gerbel and, and Mehem and, and, and the Ammonites gave gifts to Uzziah and, and, and his name spread abroad even to the entering of Egypt for his strength. You see them Egypt man, man, them Egyptians gonna be worried about it. You know, he got one he ain't following, you know what I'm saying, the Egyptian religion. Alright. Moreover, Uzziah built towers in Jerusalem at the corner gate and the valley gate and at the turning the wall and fortified them. Also he built towers in the desert and dig many wells, for he made much let me see, for he had much cattle. But but the low of the country and the plains, the husband and all the vine dressers and mountains and and in Carmel, for he had husbandry, you know what I'm saying? So he had plenty of livestock. Moreover Josiah had an host of fighting men that went out to war and by bands according to the number of their account by the hand of Jael, the scribe and Masiel, the ruler under the hand of Hananiel, one of the uh, king's captain, the whole number of the chief of the fathers. You know what I'm so, you know, as it boiled down, you know what I'm saying? He was straight, man. He, you know what I'm saying? Took care of the business and so forth. You know what I'm saying? And I think, you know, he did something and, and, and then got some leprosy in the end. And then, you know, Prophet Isaiah was there. You know and, and Uzziah the king was leprosy to his day and dwell several days being in the league before he cut off from the house of the Elohim and Johan his son, Jotham his son was over the king's house and judging of the land. So Jotham come on, Jotham was 25 years old when he began to reign and he reigned uh, 16 years in Jerusalem and his mother's name was also 
Jerusha, and the daughter of Zalah, and he did that which was right in the sight of Elohim, according to all that his father Uzziah did. Howbeit he entered not into the temple of the Elohim, and the people did yet men corruptly. He built the high gate of the house of the Elohim on the wall of Ophel. He built much. Moreover, he built cities in the mountains of Judah and, and, and in the forest. He built castles. So, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? He was straight. He fought also with the king of the Ammonites and prevailed against them and the children of Ammon and gave him the same year a hundred talents of silver. So, you know what I'm saying? He was robbing them and tearing their mouth out. So then... He, you know, so Jahan became mighty because he prepared his way before the Elohim, his Yah. Now the rest of the acts of Jahan and all his wars and his ways, lo, they are written in the books of the kings of Israel and Judah. And he was five and twenty years old when he began to reign and, and reign sixteen years. And Jahan slept with his fathers and they buried him in the city of David. And Ahaz, his son, reigned in his city. And then this is going to be what a problem come at when Ahaz come on. When, when when Ahaz come on, you know, it was all kind of stuff going on. And I think he even got with one of the the Amorite uh, uh, Philistine daughters and stuff and, and was doing that Egyptian stuff. And then uh, all kind of stuff. He worshiped and everything. And then he would get in all kind of mess. And then Almighty Yah had Isaiah uh, prophet Isaiah as the prophecy dealing with him and then that's where the people gonna draw that Emmanuel story from it ain't got nothing to do with no Jesus uh, 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 coming 2,000 years later to do nothing after the covenant was broke all right so we see Ahaz was 26 years old when he began to reign and he reigned 16 years in Jerusalem but he did not that which was right in the sight of the Elohim like David his father. For he walked in the ways of the kings of Israel and made also molten images for Balaam. Moreover, he burnt incense in the valleys of uh, the valley of son of Hinnom and burnt his children. You know what I'm saying? Man, you know, you know what I'm saying? He was doing abortions. He was having abortions. You know what I'm saying? And, and burnt his children in the fire after the abominations of the heathen whom the Elohim had cast out before the children of Israel. That's the Amorite culture. So he was having all them women knocking them off and he was allowing abortions to go on. He sacrificed also and burnt incense in the high places and on the hills and under every green tree. Wherefore the Elohim, his yacht, delivered him into the hand of the king of Syria. And they smote him and carried him away a great multitude of them captives and brought them to Damascus. And he was also delivered into the hand of the king of Israel who smote him with a great slaughter. For Pekah the son of Ramallah slew in Judah an hundred and twenty thousand in one day, which were availing men because they had forsaken the Elohim their yachts. He says the Hebrew on Hebrew fighting and so forth. So that would go on. You know what I'm saying? That would go on. Look, and, and, and the children of Israel carried away captives of their breathing, 200,000 women, sons, and daughters, and took also away much spoil from them and brought them spoil to uh, uh, Samaria. But a prophet of the Elohim was there whose name was Ob Oded, and he went out before the host that come into Samaria and said unto them, Behold, because the Elohim, our uh, Yah, fathers, was worth with Judah, he had delivered them into your hand, and, and ye have slain them in a great rage that reaches up unto heaven. And then ye propose to keep under the children of Judah in Jerusalem for bondmen and bondwoman, men unto you, but are there not with you, even with you, sins against the Elohim your Yah? Now hear me therefore and deliver the captives again which ye have taken captives of your brethren for the fears of the Elohim is upon you. Then the certain of the heads of the children of Eph Ephraim, Azariah the son of Johan and Barish the son of Methulmoth and Jeshem the son of Shalom and Amasiah the son of Hell stood up against them that came from the war. You know so 
and said unto them, Ye shall not bring in the captives hither, for whereas we have offended against the Elohim already, ye intend to add more to our sins and to our trespass, for our trespass is great, and there is furious wealth in Israel. So the armed men left the captives in the spoil before the princes. You know, we turned the people loose. And, and all the congregation and, and the men which were expressed by name rose up and took the captives and with the spoil clothed all that were naked among them and arrayed them and showed them and gave them to eat and to drink and anointed them and carried them all feeble upon them upon asses and brought them to Jericho, the city of palm trees, meant to their brethren. Then they returned to Samaria. You know, but Ahaz was wicked and he was doing all kind of stuff. He was doing all kind of stuff. So then this is going to be kind of like that time going through his troubles is when you get to uh, uh, Isaiah 6. All right. And then it's going to lead to 7. I just want to get a little understanding, man, before we get to 7. You know what I'm saying? Well, I could just start on 7. All right. 6 going to talk about the uh, what's going to happen to them exiles. You know what I'm saying? Because it was over. Because everybody sinning. Everybody doing wickedness. Ain't nobody righteous and so forth. And then how 6 going to go into how the... Uh, how the exiles get knocked off and stuff. I explained that in videos, but let's get down to seven. And it come to pass in the days of Ahaz, the son of Jaham, the son of Uzziah, king of Judah, that Razin, king of Syria, and Pekah, the son of Re Re Remala, king of Israel, went up toward Jerusalem to war against it, but could not prevail against it. And it was told the house of David, saying, Syria is confederate with Ephraim. And his heart was moved in the heart of his people as the trees of the wood were moved with the wind. Then said the Elohim unto Isaiah, Go forth now to meet Ahaz, thou in Sher Sher, thy son, you know, that's prophet Isaiah's son, at, at the end of the conduit of the upper pool in the high way of the fillers field, and say unto them, Take heed and be quiet, fear not, neither be faint hearted, for the two tails of these smoking firebrands, for the furious anger of Razin with Syria and, 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 and of the sons of Ramon, because Syria, Ephraim, and the sons of Ramon have taken evil counsel against thee, saying, Let us go up against Judah and vax it, and let us make a breach therein for us, and set a king in the midst of it. Take even the son of Tobiel. See, so they was trying to set up them a do boy in, in, in the tribe of Judah. You know, and Israel was confederate with Syria and so forth. So, you know, the creator going to tell them how Assyria was going to come and then how that they was going to come at a certain time before a child was able to do this and that. And, and that's going to be prophet Isaiah and them sons that, that he had with that prophetess. And then how that Assyria came and did just what Almighty Yah said and how he took the leadership away from from the northern kingdom and i explained that in video and how ain't none of this got to do nothing with no demigod look for the head for this said the elohim it shall not stand neither shall it come to pass for the head of syria is damascus and the head of damascus is razin and within three score and five years shall ephraim be broken that it be not a people and then that happened when the tribe, uh, uh, when the Assyrians came and robbed them and, and broke everything up and took the leaders away. And as I explained in videos, how sometimes the Babylonian Amorite tribes would take control of Assyria and how the Assyrians would take control of Babylon. And then how Assyria got uh, uh, took in control of when they came and took the uh the tribe of Ephraim, the leaders uh, away from the northern kingdom, as the creator has said what happened. Look, but all right, 
For the head of Syria is Damascus, and the head of Damascus is Razin, and within three score and five years shall Ephraim be broken, that it be not a people. And the head of Ephraim is Samaria, and the head of Samaria is Ramilla's son. If if we will not be if ye will not believe, surely ye shall not be established. Moreover, the Elohim spake unto Ahaz, saying, As thee a sign of the of the Elohim thy Yah. Ask it either in the depth or in the height above. But Ahaz said, I will not ask, neither will I tempt the Elohim. And he said, Hear ye now, O house of David, it is a small thing for you to worry men, but will ye worry my Yah also? Therefore the Elohim himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Now this, now this virgin is just a clean woman. You know what I'm saying? A woman that ain't had no sex. Whereas the prophet uh, uh, Almighty Yah told Prophet Hoshia to go into some prostitutes to some unclean women that, that, that wasn't a virgin. You see what I'm saying? They had kids already. You see what I'm saying? Look. The word of the Elohim that came unto Hosea, the son of Beery, in the days of Uzziah, Jodham, Ahaz, and Hezekiah, king of Judah. So he around the same time, prophet Isaiah is around. Whereas prophet Isaiah went into a clean woman and, and had kids because of the tribe of Judah. He gonna go into a, a, a woman that ain't, you know what I'm saying, the whoredom and stuff. And the, as what the children... Israel, the northern kingdom, stood for. Look, the word of the Elohim that came unto Hosea, the son of Beery, in the days of Uzziah, Jaham, Ahaz, Hezekiah, kings of Judah, and in the days of Jeroboam, the son of Jehoaz, king of Israel, the beginning of the word of the Elohim by Hosea. And the Elohim said unto Hosea, Go take unto thee a wife of whoredoms. And children of whoredoms, for the land hath committed great whoredoms, departing from the Elohim. So he went and took Gomer, the daughter of Diblam, which conceived and bore him a son. And Elohim said unto him, Call his name Jezreel for yet a little while, and I will avenge the blood of Jezreel upon the house of Je I mean, Jehu. But, but you see how he was told to go take a prostitute. He was told to go take a prostitute. All right, so we know that this uh, uh, Almighty Yah said uh, a virgin, somebody clean, gonna gonna have a baby. Look, therefore the Elohim Himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and shall call his name Emmanuel. So that that means Yah is with us because Yah was with Ahaz and and. and in them, you know what I'm saying. You see, he's speaking to him, butter and honey shall he eat, that he may know to refuse the evil and choose the good. But before the child shall know to refuse the evil and to choose the good, the land that at heart, the, the, the land that thou at heart shall be forsaken of both her kings. And then that's what happened to. Romilia with, with with Syria and with the northern kingdom. You know what I'm saying? Hosea, that, that happened. That came to pass. The, the Elohim, let me see. The Elohim shall bring upon thee and upon thy people and upon thy father's house days that have not come from the days that Ephraim departed from Judah, even the king of Assyria. So he telling you, he bringing the king of Assyria up. And, and then that happened. All right. And, and it shall come to pass in that day. It shall come. It shall come to pass in, in that day. The Elohim shall hiss for the fly that is in the uttermost part of the rivers of Egypt. And for the bee that is in the land of Assyria. And they shall come and shall rest all of them in the desolate valleys and in the holes and rocks and upon all thrones and upon the bushes. And, and, and that come to pass, man, the Egyptians and the Syrians tore our mouth out. 
In the same day shall the Elohim shave with a razor that is hired, namely by them beyond the river, by the king of Assyria, in the head, in the hair, in the feet, and it shall all consume the beard. And, and, and it shall come to pass in that day that a man shall nourish a young cow and two sheep, and it shall come to pass for the abundance of milk that they shall Give he shall eat butter, and for butter and honey shall everyone eat that is left in the land. Saying there's gonna be some prosperity, you know what I'm saying. And after this little tribulations with them folks, you know what I'm saying, come to an end, you know. And, and, and it shall come to pass in that day that every place shall be where there was a thousand vines and had a thousand siblings, and it shall even be for berries and thorns. You see, so um. With arrows and with bows shall men come thither, because all the land shall become bearers and thorns, and all the hills that shall be digged with the mattock there shall not come neither the fear of bearers and thorns, but it shall all be for the sinning forth of oxen, for the trading of lesser cattle. Look, all right. Moreover, the Elohim said unto me, Take thee a great roll and write in it a man's pen concerning Mereshushabaz. And, and I took unto me a faithful witness to record Uri the priest and Zechariah the son of Jabiricha. And I went unto the prophetess. Look, I went unto the prophetess and she conceived and bore a son. Then said the hymns, you see, that's that son that, 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 that come about. And he went in to a clean woman, a prophetess, you know. For before the child shall have knowledge to cry, my father and my mother, the riches of Damascus and the spoil of Samaria shall be taken away before the king of Assyria. And then that come to pass. That came to pass. The Elohim spake unto me again, saying, For as much as this people refuses to waters of Shiloh that goeth softly and rejoice in Razim and Ramilisun. Now therefore, behold, the Elohim bringeth up. Man, I can show you where, where, they done, where they came to pass and then them folks come in the land clowning and so forth. So we know that this God's son, that, that they use that word Emmanuel and ain't, 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 ain't kosher and that Almighty Yah used the uh, the, the 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 son the God son as a turn of endurement and how our enemies and that captured y'all with, with that God son stuff with that God son net and then captured you like I tell you that it come from the slavery days and that how did they got the slaves to believe in Jesus because man it, it, it's everlasting you ain't got to put the shackles on them on their body no more if you get them to believe in Jesus and that's when they let the slaves off the plantation when they seen that we was at 99% because it wasn't no other religion it wasn't no Islam during the slavery days man, man it wasn't no Buddha worship it wasn't none of that it was Jesus or death and, and then how did they put them Jesus Jesus' owners and then how did the slave owner wouldn't beat the slave if he called out Jesus' name, and then how did that became popular among the slaves? And then how did you individuals don't know that it was a whole bunch of Jesus? Each one of those Jesus is written in Jewish sources, and you can't go cry and say that the Jewish sources ain't right because the Jewish sources come before the Christian source. The Jewish source come before the Christian source, and Jesus is supposed to be the Jew, so they're going to have more accurate history, and they got a whole bunch of Jesus recorded. You see what I'm saying? So we Hebrews, we ain't going to be no fool. We ain't going to be no fools. And then how did they use the Tanakh history to try to undermine the Tanakh history? That's how our enemies get down. And then I explain how did we dealing with some Babylonian scribes. And then how we dealing with some Babylonian scribes that, that know how to uh, alter history because they've been doing it for a long time. They've been altering history for a long time. And matter of fact, Western civilization fell into their hands. And then that's where the Jesus story come from. They was demigod worshippers as well as these peoples right here 
that settled in the promised land after we 99% ran off into Africa. And we know that Almighty Y'all said everybody will set their thrones up at the uh, gates of Jerusalem. Well, that happened. Well, how about all these folks move to the promised land? I'm going to show you. All these folks right here would believe in God's sons. Then wrote, Counselor, this is Ezra uh, 4, verse 9. Then wrote the counselor and Shimei the scribe and the rest of their companions, the Danites, the Archivites, the Tapalites, the, the Harphistophites, the Archivites, the Babylonians, the Shushanites, the Devites, and the Elamites. All them believe in God's sons, all right? The people that were settled, and then them settling men around about 538 B.C., but 200 years before they settled, while we was on Egyptian religion, uh, some more God's son worshipers would be placed in our land. And that's going to be the separate beams. All these people right here believe in God's sons from Babylon. And then they will move into our land. So as soon as we leave out the land, you know they're going to start their God's son worship. And then that's what the New Testament is. Look. This is Second Kings chapter 17, verse 24. And the king of Assyria brought men from Babylon and from Cuth and from Abel and from Hamath and from Sepharavim and placed them in the cities of Samaria instead of the children of Israel. And they possessed Samaria and dwelt in the cities thereof. Now they believed in God's sons as well as the people that was placed in the land after them, after we ran off during the Babylonian wars and left them people out of land, then you know they're going to create a new book in a new history, in, in the New Testament. And then I explain that how the people in the New Testament in the discopolis cities was Ashkenazi. So, man, it's time to wake up. We ain't, we ain't doing a slave owner's religion no more. The, the Israelite Brotherhood cut the string to the slave owner's religion. Now, if you... Israelites that's called African Americans and blacks want to continue to believe in your slave owner's religion, then you going on to your death with that because we waking up and we ain't finna have that in the promised land as I explained in one of the videos that we ain't letting no demigod worship set back up in the promised land with us Israelites that want to go back home to the promised land and that how we don't want Jesus to go with us. We don't want Jesus nowhere near us in the mountains worship. We don't want no believers in Jesus with us and we pray that Almighty Yah don't let none of y'all come with us. And, 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 and if the people that I'm starting to negotiate our heritage with, it, it, if they open in, in the green light, come on, that if you got to come through the Israelite Brotherhood some kind of way to get even in the promised land, because we ain't going to sneak in the promised land, and we ain't finna be, and we ain't finna ask for no citizenship, and we ain't sneaking across no borders like the other Israelites. We ain't sneaking across no borders or nothing like that. They gonna recognize that we the Israelites and that we broke covenant during the Babylonian wars and that they got to come on down and that they got to come on down and how almighty y'all gonna make this work and that how we not gonna be for, uh, 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 for our home. You know what I'm saying? We ain't gonna be to get back in our home and, and that if the Israelite brotherhood got something to do with it, you demigod worshipers is not coming with us. You're gonna have to stay here in hell you're going to have to stay in hell you're going to have to stay in hell if you believe in Jesus because you can't come with us this is a message from the Israelite brotherhood that almighty Yah used the son uh, the God's son or uh, uh, Yah's son as a turn of endearment as I explained how almighty Yah said that Israel was his first born you know if Israel his first born that that and that came before the the Jesus, you know what I'm saying? That that came before the Jesus thing was even thought because we in Exodus, we dealing with Pharaoh in Egypt, and thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, This said the Elohim, Israel is my first 
is my son, even my firstborn. See, look, and thou shalt say unto Pharaoh, this said to Elohim, Israel is my son, even my firstborn. And then I show you how Almighty Yah said the tribe of Ephraim, King David, all, all them his begotten sons. Okay, Hebrews, this is a message from the Israelite Brotherhood and, and how we cutting the strings. We cutting the strings. Look, I'm cutting the strings to the demigod worship.